Yeah. All right, guys, you're listening and watching the Sabotage Show here live on Manic Dash Expression and the Sabotage Show dot uh, Actually, today I want to talk about some of my favorite uh, horror movies. Um, I don't really have much of a set behind me right now uh, in regards to Halloween, but I'm working on one, and hopefully I'll have that up by the 31st. Anyway, so um. I kind of just want to talk about some of my favorite horror movies from my childhood because uh, this time of year really uh, makes me uh, makes me remember them and think about them and uh, just kind of gets me into the spirit of things because this is my my favorite time of year. Um, I'd have to say I want to start off with uh, well I have a couple here with me actually. Um, let me just grab one. All right. I got a couple here, actually. I just thought I'd show you them. Okay, so right here I have uh, the Hellraiser movies. Actually, it's just part two and three. But these, uh, we actually talked about this the other night, Kyle, um, Mark, and myself. And, uh, you know, when I was a kid, when I was growing up, uh, I kind of got away with watching these. And I know a lot of kids at that age, you know, um, eight to, I don't know, 12 or 13, weren't supposed to be really watching them. I think I even started younger than that. But, uh... I mean, shit, these things used to give me nightmares. And, uh, but it does, at the same time, it does, uh, give me a lot of good memories, too. Uh, sitting in a dark living room, uh, you know, the, at the time, the, the, um, 24-inch TV was considered a big TV. You know, it was, uh, dark, it was probably midnight. And I would sit there and I'd watch these kind of movies, uh, you know, Hellraiser, A Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th. And we'd always have the pumpkin in the background, and we would, uh, you know, we'd just sit around and watch these movies. Or most of the time, it was even just by myself. I'd sit there, sit there and watch them. And then sometimes, I'd end up having to go to bed. So many memories are coming back. I'd have to go to bed, and I remember it being so dark. I'd be laying there underneath my covers, and I could only imagine the things that were under my bed or in my closet, or just waiting for me outside of my door. But at the same time, it was an adrenaline rush. Uh, and it just it brought back a lot of good memories, especially the uh, Hellraiser series, because they were so so evil and dark. Um, now the Nightmare on Elm Street movies, uh, I actually really didn't get into the early early ones. Um, I guess I should say the first and second one. The first one, uh, as I've gotten older, I, I do enjoy a little bit more. I do see the uh, the art there, uh, and it, it is uh, it still holds a, a place, I guess, in that uh, the great horror films of all time. Uh, the second one, I never really did enjoy that much. There was a couple scenes I remember, uh, particularly the beginning when uh, Freddy is driving the bus, as you as you probably remember, recall, and he drives it right off the uh, off the cliff there, and the kids are all screaming, "You're passing my stop! You're passing my stop!" That's just one of those memories that I've kind of always held on to. Uh, yeah, and then I guess the third one too. The third one is definitely my favorite. Uh, there's always a lot of mixed opinions on that one. It does hit and miss with some people, uh, but for me. I'll always remember that one as being probably my favorite. Uh, and then, of course, the fourth one, which is, uh, the I think it's the Dream Master. Still a very good movie. Uh, the fifth and sixth, they kind of get a little a little different. Uh, still uh, pretty good. The fifth one apparently was supposed to be a, a higher uh, rating. It was supposed to be, I believe, almost an X uh, because of the amount of gore that was in it. Um, but they had to cut a lot of that out just to be able to get it to show in theaters and so people could actually go and see it. Uh, let's see here. The sixth one was just Freddy's Dead. Uh, that one, um, strangely enough, again, it holds a uh, it holds a lot of memory for me. I guess you could say. I, I remember going to the video store almost every weekend. Uh, this is when it was still VHS. There was no DVDs yet, and I would go there almost every weekend, and I would rent that movie, and I watched it three or four times, and then I'd bring it back, come back the next weekend watch it three or four times. I think I must have done that for a couple of years, it seemed like, but, uh, so even though it's a pretty bad movie, uh, it had a, it held a, a spot in my heart, I guess you could say. Uh, so we'll just, uh, go from there. Uh, and then I guess, uh, A New Nightmare came out, and I remember that one, because I, it was in 1994, it was, I think it was early 94, and, uh, I remember seeing a commercial for it, and I was, and at the time, there was really no internet, no local access for anybody. And I remember sitting there watching TV, and, and a commercial can, had come on for it, and I was so excited. I remember just, like, freaking out. I used to have dreams about this movie. Like, I couldn't imagine what it was going to be about. But finally it came out, and uh, because I'm such a fan of A Nightmare on Elm Street, I, I did like it. Um, it's not one of my favorites. A lot of people say it's it's as good as the first one. 
uh, they would put it right up there. Uh, it was a good finale as opposed to Freddy's Dead. But for me, it was, um, I don't know, I, I didn't really like the humor of the, the uh, mid-Nightmare movies. But that one was lacking in it, I guess you could say. It just didn't, it just didn't hold that spot that the other ones did, in my opinion. But uh, yeah, still, you know, still a decent film. I own them all now, but and still trying to collect them all on Blu-ray, which is another thing I want to talk about today. Um, I did uh, post a, a, a question on uh, the forum page uh, regarding uh, movies that should never have been released on Blu-ray, let alone anything for that matter, uh, after they were put out on VHS or DVD or whatever, but some movies that were put out on Blu-ray, they just never should have been. And I believe one of the ones that were said was Jason X. Now, it's funny that you mention that because, or it was Jason Goes to Hell. Uh, because when I was posting that on the forum to get your opinions, uh, that's the very movie that I was in the middle of watching when I paused it, put it on, posted on face or posted on uh, Manic, saying which movie should never have been brought to Blu-ray, and that was one of the ones that were put up there, so it was exactly the one I was thinking of. Uh, but again, that's one of those movies I guess I kind of have a soft spot for just because it, uh, like the Jason X movie, because it just, it, it does fit the bill in the sense that it still holds that Jason charm, that Friday the 13th charm. Uh, I could actually think back to the earlier ones, like the first one and the second one, I really didn't like because they didn't really introduce the Jason Voorhees character, who's actually Mrs. Voorhees in the first one, which... Uh, even to this day, I, I actually do own on Blu-ray, but I, I just, you know, I just can't seem to really enjoy it and really, really like it. Uh, it's okay, I guess. Um, uh, again, it's just part of the collector series for me. It's I'll probably watch it once. I, I don't even think I've opened it, like I said. I, I think I've, it's still sitting in this plastic wrap or whatever. But anyway, so that's one of them. But it, I think by the third and fourth film, they started introducing the, the character of Jason Voorhees. Uh, where he was actually a um, uh, demonic presence, I guess you could say, um, possessed, uh, keeps coming back because he's trying to uh, get this vengeance on these uh, camp counselors that uh, let him drown when he was a kid. So the, the, the whole story to uh, Jason Voorhees is always great, in my opinion anyway. But uh, So yeah, that one holds a special spot in my heart again, uh, getting all sissy-like here. Uh, what else did I want to talk about? What other movies remind me of this time of year? Uh, there's so many, like Halloween the movies. Um, you know, actually, uh, honestly, again, uh, the first one, the original, I mean, uh, was great, I think. Um, there was the one, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe it was the third one. Like, I'm probably wrong. Uh, it was the uh, Halloween season of The Witch. Uh, a lot of people didn't like that because it really didn't tie into the storyline of Michael Myers. But for me, it was really... It was a completely different story, but I liked it. Uh, they could have really given it another name, I suppose, but for me, it was it was fine the way it was. I really did enjoy it. Uh, so yeah, again, that one that one holds a spot. You know, there's just so many. I remember even some of the cheesy ones, like uh, Child's Play, kind of went into a comedic direction, like a Nightmare on Elm Street did, except for it did go a little overboard with uh, Seed of Chucky, uh, Bride of Chucky, and things like that. But I really do <clears throat> like the first and second one, third one. And the most recent um, uh, Curse of Chucky, I found that wasn't that wasn't too bad. It, uh, it definitely had an interesting uh, ending to it, which was kind of stupid, but whatever. Um, yeah, so uh, and and I can even go back further than that. I remember in the uh, the late '80s watching movies like Demonic Toys. Uh, if you're listening to this podcast, if you're watching this podcast, Google it, look it up on the uh, Internet Movie Database, and you might not even be able to find it anywhere. Uh, you might have to try to search pawn shops or uh, look online for this movie, but it is definitely, it's a cheesy uh, toys come to life, these demonic toys, and they basically try to kill these people in a warehouse because, well, they showed up there. That's pretty much about it. Uh, yeah, people are pretty uh, pretty stupid, but uh, um, it's pretty funny watching these people try to fight these little baby toys and things like that because really you could just take it and fucking rip its head off and then throw it against the wall or something like that, but apparently people are fucking stupid as shit. Anyway, I'm going off, I'm going off my, uh, rocker here, but, um, yeah, so, uh, anyway, Halloween and, uh, horror movies, they just, they just tie in together really well. Uh, I mean, li like, this time of year is perfect. You watch, uh, AMC right now, you're getting, uh, the horror, the horror marathon, uh, running straight through, and then, of course, you're getting Walking Dead, which is awesome, right? You can't ask for more. You get The Walking Dead and get a bunch of horror movies, and they're just doing it back to back. It would be nice to see it fully uncensored. I hate how they do that, but I guess they don't really have much of a choice when it comes down to it. Um, 
I would like to see one movie, even though I own this movie, I'd like to see them put it on TV again, uh, just to get a reaction from this uh, this generation. Because I do hear that they're making the remake of the movie uh, Stephen King's It. I would love to see it if they would just post, or sorry, broadcast the original 1990, I think it was 1990, release of the film, and just see what the uh, the reaction is like from the younger generation, see if they like it, if it scares them at all. It might even give the, uh, the, uh, the new director, the new uh, screenwriter for the new film, uh, some ideas of what might work better for this new movie because I find that just with these new remakes they're not really they're not really acting on what the people want anymore they're just giving them what they know that they'll they'll go see and they're not really gonna grab everybody like me like I'm not gonna go see these movies in uh, in theater uh, it actually has to grab me so that that the first preview I see that first trailer if it actually does get my attention, I'll go see that movie. But I have to say, it's been a long time since something's done that. Even with the Evil Dead movie, it just never grabbed my attention. I mean, the remake. But yeah, again, like Evil Dead, that's another one. Because I, I remember watching that one as a kid. Actually, that's one of my first memories of watching a horror movie. Go figure, it's one of the most gory and just... It actually scared the living shit out of me when I was a kid. Uh, so yeah, definitely, if you haven't seen that, which I don't imagine anybody hasn't, but... Uh, that's one. Um, another movie I want you guys to check out if you ever get a chance to. It's uh, it's called House. No, not Doctor House. It's called House. It actually is, uh, I believe it was a uh, late 80s movie as well. Um, it kind of balances on the border of cheesy, but it not at the same time. It had some moments. It was pretty scary. Um, it had Bull from the Night Court, the TV series. Anyway, you got to check this out. He was one of the, he was like the main evil thing in the in this movie so you got to check it out um i mean that's really uh there's not really a whole lot more to it i will be doing my halloween special uh hopefully like i said posting posting it on the 31st but um let me know what you guys think uh what are your favorite horror movies of all time i've talked to some of the guys i've talked to kyle uh we know how he loves horror movies uh i've talked to the uh, big black hat man mark and he's kind of like uh, i don't know he doesn't really like them and i gave him a really bad one darkness falls to watch uh, probably not the best idea. I'm going to try to come up with another one, and he's going to try to come up with another, uh, Western for me to watch. Uh, I'll try to get through that without falling asleep or, you know, finding him and killing him, but we'll see what happens. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching, and, um, I would like to thank my sponsors for the show, and, uh, that, you can actually watch the commercial right now, as a matter of fact. Thanks for watching, guys. Hello, friends. Big Black Hat Man here encouraging you to buy this. I don't know what it is, I don't use it, and I don't care, but they're paying me to say so. So you should buy this, so they'll pay me more money.